Adam Bona declares for the NBA draft. Dante Moore said he left UCLA football in part because he thought Chip Kelly would quit. And the Lakers edge closer to a better seed in the play-in tournament. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. So it is April 13th, 2024. I am back in St. Loser misery for work. So be it. Gotta make the money. But you know what makes you happy when you're off work? It's LA Sports. And if you like being in the know about LA, click and clack the like button. Click and clack the subscribe button. There's a notification bell. Hit that and let you know we drop new content. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. Totally look forward to hearing from you. Now, before we go through the news and notes, <clears throat> a look at the scoreboard. Took 11 innings, but Slime Diego slithered past the Dodgers 8-7. to seven. The Dodgers hit a lot of home runs. I will say uh, last night, Mookie Betts hit his sixth home run of the year. Teoscar Hernandez hit his fifth homer. Shohei Otani hit his fourth. And the power just seemed to go out in the extra innings. Lakers 123, Memphis 120. LeBron James scored 37 points. Anthony Davis returned to action with 36. Meanwhile, Golden State and Sacramento lost, which meant in a matter of hours, the Lakers vaulted from 10th in the Western Conference all the way up to 8th with one game to go. And it's going to be complicated to explain, but we will talk about those implications in a few moments. Utah 111, Clippers 109. Bones Highland led with 20 points. Kawhi Leonard did not play, but that's pretty much to be expected. Clippers aren't going anywhere. They've got the fifth seed locked up. They even know who they're playing in the first round of the playoffs. Meanwhile, today, Slime Diego is at the Dodgers again at 6. Gavin Stone is 0-1 with a 7.88 ERA. Matt Waldron 0-1 with a 3.86 ERA. Anaheim is in town to play the Kings at 7.30. It's Galaxy Game Day. The Galaxy are at Vancouver at 7.30. The winner takes sole possession of first in MLS's Western Conference. LAFC is at Portland at uh, 12.45. The Black and Gold will be facing their former goalkeeper, Maxime Crapo. And Angel City is at Chicago at 5.30. And let's get to the news. UCLA center Adam Bona has declared for the NBA draft. And despite all the nice nice that they were saying to each other after that decision, it's a problem. UCLA wanted to rebuild itself in the off season. And you could argue that Bona is the one guy that the Bruins did not want to lose because Mick Cronin preaches defense and the six foot 10 sophomore earned Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. Not only that, the year before, he was the conference's Rookie of the Year. Now, Bona attempted to go to the NBA draft that year, but he rescinded his decision because he hadn't recovered from a shoulder injury in time to go out and impress pro scouts. For UCLA, because of this decision, the options that are there now are not particularly ideal. Ade Mara would be the so-called next guy up, but he was a freshman last year. There is the transfer portal, but to be frank, it's hard to envision getting somebody who is as strong of a rim protector with one of the three available scholarships. And by the way, from what I've been reading, UCLA had been looking for another forward and a guard. That would take up two of those three scholarships. Now, Cronin, for his part, was gracious, as you would expect. Quote, we are so thankful for his unselfish time as a Bruin. He's a humble young man with a big heart, and he has been a fantastic teammate. Adam is going to be an unbelievable player, unquote. And then Cronin said, oh bleep, what the hell am I going to do now? Joking aside, I wouldn't call this decision catastrophic for the Bruins. Last year was catastrophic for the Bruins. But Bona was a good player on a bad Bruins team. So I do think UCLA can still figure out, figure out what to do without him. As for him in the NBA, Bona is probably a second round pick. Maybe late first round. 
a little bit too one-dimensional and he gets in foul trouble a lot. Elsewhere in Westwood, would you believe that former Bruins quarterback Dante Moore thought Chip Kelly wanted out of UCLA during the season? And as a result, maybe that was why Moore entered the transfer portal in the first place. Now, Moore, you may recall, he was in the argument for the best high school prospect in the country when he flipped his commitment last spring from Oregon to UCLA. To recap, Kelly included Moore among the three quarterbacks that he claimed were all starting caliber. Kelly wound up choosing Moore, who played pretty much like you would expect a freshman to play. 11 touchdowns but nine interceptions. And now that Moore is in Oregon, he implied losing the starting gig to Ethan Garbers was not the issue that inspired him to go to the transfer portal. Quote, I'm blessed to even play college football at 18 years old, learned a lot, made a lot of mistakes. I got the feeling of a lot of things weren't going our way the coaching staff. I had a feeling they were gonna leave. Deep down inside, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get developed as best I could, unquote. Now, if you look at the timeline, you might convince yourself that Moore is fudging the truth a little bit. I mean, Moore entered the portal before Kelly said he was out. Also, when Moore entered the portal, the stories that were coming out then was that, oh my gosh, I'm a teenager, I'm away from my parents the first time. But should we really dismiss what Moore is saying? Should we? Consider this scenario, and I'm not saying I was there, obviously, I don't have sources with the UCLA football program, but consider this possibility. Chip Kelly being a curmudgeon at practice, Tired of seeing the plane circling over the Rose Bowl, asking UCLA to fire him. And there's Kelly complaining, but he's not complaining about execution of the team. He's not complaining about their level of hustle, but about his job status. Meanwhile, if you're Dante Moore, you're 18. Now, I'm only speculating, but is it possible that Moore lost faith in the program? Let me know what you think in the comments thread. Also with Bruins football, defensive coordinator Ikeka Malo said the Bruins scheme is not changing. Matter of fact, just like DeAnton Lynn last spring, the focus appears to be to return to the fundamentals. Malo also added that it's foolish to think that the Bruins could replace all that they have lost in the pass rush. Quote, we've lost five guys on the outside edge. In terms of replacing them, I won't. I can't. So we've just got to manufacture some different ways of getting pressure differently. Unquote. Have you ever heard of the phrase workout warrior? A dude who's a marginal NFL prospect, but he just blows up at the draft combine or the individual workouts and winds up getting picked. Edge rusher Gabriel Murphy, formerly of UCLA, already seemed like a lock to get his name called in the draft. But according to CBSSports.com, his twin brother Grayson just dominated in the workouts, absolutely destroyed. He finished in the 90th percentile in the 40-yard dash, broad jump, and vertical jump. So he might be making a name for himself and trying to avoid, well, hell, I don't even know if the Arena League exists, trying to avoid the UFL maybe. The Lakers went into Friday's action with the exact same record as 8th seeded Sacramento and 9th seeded Golden State. But the, those other teams, they had the Lakers on tiebreakers. And that's what made last night's face plant of both Golden State and the Kings so important. Had the Lakers finished the season in 10th, they would have faced two must-win games back-to-back -back in order to advance to the playoffs, where if they wound up winning them both, they would wind up being the eighth seed and face Oklahoma City, which is currently the top seed. As it turns out, if the Lakers defeat New Orleans on Sunday, 
Now, instead of two must-win games, they have two chances to get to the playoffs. Huge difference. And if they win the first of those two chances, they're the seventh seed, not the eighth. Current number two seed right now is Minnesota. Now, having said all of that, the Lakers have the tougher matchup of the three teams on Sunday because they're playing New Orleans. Golden State is going to play host to Utah. Sacramento is going to host Portland. The Jazz and the Blazers stink. Any way you slice it, though, what I thought was kind of amusing was listening to Anthony Davis talk about the Lakers situation. Because prior to the game, he sounded a lot like a man who had been repeatedly punched in the face, which is, of course, exactly how his season's been going. He's been getting hit in the face. He said after missing the last two games, for example, from being hit in the face, that he feels phenomenal. And then he said that despite being 10th in the Western Conference at that time, quote, I think we're in a great place, unquote. Now, to back up that claim, which, by the way, I don't buy for a moment, Davis followed the sage wisdom of Crash Davis from the classic baseball movie Bull Durham when it comes to dealing with the press. You're going to have to learn your cliches. You're going to have to study them. They are your friends. So this is what Davis said to back it up. Quote, at the end of the day, you still have to win. For us, it's about taking it one game at a time. So three cliches from Davis in less than 10 seconds. And for that, I say, well done. Cliches are, in fact, your friends when you're a professional athlete. Shohei Otani's ex-interpreter turned himself over to the feds. And at this point, to be honest with you, I'm just waiting for the player to get exonerated so that Dodger haters can scream that the fix is in. The Clippers have their playoff spot and their opponent locked up. And because of that, I've been seeing a lot of tweets suggesting that they should just rest Kawhi Leonard for the rest of the regular season. Same, by the way, for Paul George. Same for James Harden. Why risk it? The same strategy, though, cannot be said of the LA Kings because they clinched their playoff berth in the NHL but they haven't won a postseason series since they defeated the New York Rangers in the Stanley Cup Finals a decade ago. They can't afford to rest them because there are eight days left in the regular season. They're currently tied for third in the Pacific Division, but they could slide all the way down to eighth seed in the conference. So they can't take days off. And by the way, they could face any one of three teams. Edmonton for a third consecutive year which, by the way, is the most likely opponent, and let's be real, there's no reason to believe L.A. has become better than the Oilers. They could face Dallas, a very well-balanced team, which plays the heavy game that the Kings used to play when they were winning Stanley Cups. How's that for ironic? And then there's Vancouver, which might be the most favorable opponent, but it's least likely to happen of the three. Either way, no days off. <clears throat> from the college victors come professional paydays. I remember, uh, you might remember back when Clemson was a national power and general managers in the NFL were just clamoring to grab as many of the Tigers that they could. Now that Michigan is a defending national champ, the people who fancy themselves as draft experts have forecast that as many as 17 Wolverines could be selected in the NFL draft. The NFL is literally about to become 95% Wolverine, according to these people. We do even know, by the way, that 18 Michigan players were invited to the NFL Combine. Now, how does that impact the Chargers? It's kind of obvious. Their coach came from Michigan to the Chargers. So people have been busy linking the two together. Like, oh my God, Jim Harbaugh is going to take all of his old players and just recreate it in the NFL, as if that's even possible. Former Wolverines wide receiver Roman Wilson went on a podcast I don't want to listen to and said, the, of, and said, of the Bolts' nine draft picks, quote, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, all nine of us going to the Chargers. But seriously, at least five or six, unquote. Do you believe that? 
I don't think I do, but do you believe that? There are a number of reasons to be skeptical, right? For example, the Chargers are inviting players in for pre-draft workouts, and it is not a parade of former Wolverines. Edge rusher Dallas Turner, for example, has a visit scheduled with the Bolts. And for those of us who aren't sure if UCLA's Leatu Leitu is the best pass rusher, those people who say that, they point at Turner, who had 10 sacks. But you let me know what you think in the comments thread. Do you think UCLA will be able to recover from losing Adam Bona in the NBA draft? Do you believe what Dante Moore is selling, that maybe Chip Kelly was complaining a little bit so much about the gig that Dante Moore said, I got to get out of here while the getting's good. And if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We're talking LA sports every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corte El Queso production. Take care.